light welterweight championship contest to make their way into the ring. <laughs> Referee Johnny Famishon comes into the ring. The former featherweight champion of the world to control this light welterweight championship contest here tonight. It's Frank Ropers who will be the first to come into the ring. Frank Ropers is going across to the blue corner. Frank Ropers in the Tigerland colours. Frank Ropers with 45 fights for 34 wins, lost seven, drawn four, won no contest, and won 16 of his contests inside the distance. Barry Michael now, coming around to the red corner. Barry Michael, 49 fights for 40 wins, eight losses, one drawn, and of his uh, 40 wins, 12 have been by the no argument route by the knockout. Both boys very fit. Barry Michael, who has actually built up two kilos, side. and Frank Lionel Robus has had to world boxing champion. shed Lionel three and a half uh, kilos. Lionel Introduction for Lionel Rose, the former bantamweight champion of the world. The boys to be gloved up in the ring. There's Lionel. And with him, Graham Brook. Former world bantamweight champion, Lionel Rose. Lionel Rose taking a bow at centre ring. <laughs> what a great fighter he was. Ladies and gentlemen, a very important aspect of tonight's contest is the cut-eye rule. The cut-eye rule is a WBC and ABF The boys rule waiting to be gloved and centering, gloves just coming into the ring. Has to be stopped because of an the accidental cut. The cut-eye rule being explained to the crowd. Here. If the contest ends this way in the first round, it will be a technical draw. And ending this way after the commencement of round two means the fight will be awarded to the boxer ahead on points. If at any time the fight is stopped because of a cut caused by a legitimate flow, the, the boxer, unable to continue, will lose the contest. It is up to the referee solely to rule whether a cut is caused by a legitimate flow or not. If there is a cut in the contest, referee John Famishon must confer with ringside physician Dr. Michael Clancy. So the situation is, if there's a cut in the first round, it's a draw. After that, if the fight is the uh, fight is stopped by a cut caused by a clash of heads, and the referee must so rule, then the fighter ahead on points takes the decision. In the event of a cut being caused by a blow, the fighter unable to continue loses the bout. Gloves going on. That's Barry Michael's corner, and there is Frank Robus's corner. Michael standing in the red corner and Roper sitting back in the blue corner. Timekeeper, Jack Lenning and David Membry. Tonight's fight going throughout Australia on the Channel 7 network. The gloves just being laced now and Michael, Michael looking across the ring at his opponent. Now looks away from him and Roper's surrounded by his seconds as the lacing continues over there. fast, snappy boxer, has scored a share of his contest, however, by, by knockout, but generally boxes to take points. Lost the Commonwealth title in a particularly hard bout uh, last, uh, last year, and anxious to do very well tonight. He lost his Commonwealth title to Claude Noel in July of last year. 
but is supremely confident tonight that he can take the points against Frank Ropers. Frank Ropers, the tough, brawling fighter, just keeps letting them go and keeps forcing his opponent, putting the pressure on him and giving him no place to hide. The tape's going on over the lacing. Ropers. And Michael out of the red corner is taped, ready to go. Very, very hot. Close and a little unpleasant here at the Melbourne Town Hall. And of course, there's much more unpleasant places tonight. Taking a little more time, Leo Berry taking a little more time over there in the blue corner with Ropus taping up. Michael, keen to get on with it. But Ropus, unhurried, and now he's ready, stands. And ready for the introductions for round one. And what is scheduled to be a 12 round contest. you to please be upstanding for the Australian National Anthem. John Stanley in conjunction with Channel 7 proudly present the vacant Australasian Junior Welterweight Championship between in the red corner tonight scaling 63.15 kilos the Australian lightweight champion the winner of 37 of 46 contests trained and managed by his father Len Swettenham the noble artist of ring craft banking on blitzing all those who dare cross his path Barry Boy Michael. In the blue corner tonight, scaling 63.2 kilos, the winner of 34 of 45 contests under the management of Leo McDonald and Leo Berry. The human machine always on the path of building foes into fragmentation. Frank the tank, Ropez. <laughs> Your third man, former world featherweight champion, Johnny Famishon. Johnny Famishon calls the Opponents to the centre ring. <laughs> when I call break, I want a break. Stare I want down. Hitting, break. I won't tolerate hitting on the break. When I call stop, I want you to stop boxing. Michael looking, unblinking. Ropus looking, I unblinking. Got a good clean fight. Tolerate any, uh, I don't think they're listening. Play. Okay. Hands, they're not I listening, they're box. looking. The they're staring. Come out fighting. They'll hear the bell for round one, and then it'll be on. A gesture from Ropers. <laughs> Ropers doesn't go right back to the corner. He's waiting for the bell. Twelve three-minute rounds. Australasian light well away title. Well away champion one. Ropers, lightweight champion Michael, and they're at it.
happy in his preparation for the fight in that he didn't have to boil to make the lightweight limit. But one of the dangers, of course, is that sometimes a fighter, when he comes in a little heavier than his normal weight, loses some of his zip, loses some of his speed. We'll take a round or two before we can assess whether that's happened to Michael. On the other hand, Barry Michael, who's had to really work hard to take three and a half kilos off to make the limit for the fight, whether he's been weakened by it or not, remains to be seen. Family Sean, having a word or two to say to Michael about hitting behind the scoring line. Michael fighting from a very side-on stance. And from that position, when he throws the right hand, it tends to get round behind the scoring line, landing in the kidney region, and referee Johnny Famisham was very firm in his instruction to him. A little bullying at close quarters. Break call. Michael had the inside position and ripped well with the left hand. Rapus goes well with both hands to the head, and Michael back with a nice stiff left hand jab that scored. Just past the halfway mark of the first round. Michael still working both hands to the body and then a left to the head. That right to the body is a scorer inside. Barry Michael placing his punches better in the early part of this first round. And the referee has a word or two to say to Ropers. And a word. Michael placing well to the body and the good hand left hand and the right to the head. Ropers being beaten to the punch in this first round. Good first round by Barry Michael. Hard right hand by Ropers. That was a stinger and Barry Michael brushed anxiously at his eyebrow. Settling down to the task now, and some heavy punches in that exchange. Close to the end of the first round. Good right to the head by Michael, and left to the uh, head by Michael, and a good right uppercut by Michael. Michael's points in the first round, bell for end of round one. There's that right hand, a good punch by uh, Ropus, and that was the best punch Second of the round, round, but it was the only really big punch two. that Ropus landed in the first round. Remember, if you're scoring at uh, home and TV ringside, uh, the judges, three judges, the referee not being part of the scoring pattern, but the three judges will score on a 10-point must system. 10 points to the winner of a round, share of 10 points to the loser. This time it's Ropus who gets a warning from referee Johnny Famichon for hitting behind the scoring line. It's a little difficult for Ropus because Michael is fighting so side on to him, to, uh, when he lets a right hand go, he finds it very difficult to land in front of the scoring line. Ropus, forcing the pace now on Michael, with left and right to the head, Michael comes back, leads the left hand at him, but Ropus wants to get up there, close and hammer, away with both hands. There's a left hook, good punch by Ropus. Lead by Ropus. Sharp right and left to the head by Barry Michael. Another right to the head by Michael. Hard right hand by Ropus. Michael trying to control the fight with the use of an accurate left hand. And when Ropus gets in, he tries to claim him. Robus trying to bullock in close, but the referee levers them apart. Good right by Robus, hard punch, and Michael came back. He hurt. He was hurt then because his left hook missed by a margin, but he stands in close to his opponent. Good defensive tactics uh, by uh, Barry Michael. Robus trying to bullock his way clear, and Michael goes with a right hand uppercut. He wouldn't want to swap punches with Ropus, particularly so early in the fight. If he falls for that, I think he's going to have a lot of trouble. Oh, 
minute to go in this uh, second round. Much better round for Frank Ropers. Michael trying to get back in the points now as he goes with both hands to the body. Michael with the left and he's got Ropers back in that corner. Stays in on top of him as Ropers tries to fight his way out. Michael crowding up Ropers, not letting Ropers get room to punch. Up comes Ropers at him again. A little bit bamboozled there by Michael and Michael won the points of that exchange. Fast right hand by Barry Michael. Left hand jab. Just through the gloves as the bell goes for the end of round two. The second round and uh, this illustrates the strength of uh, Ropus as he let that round arm right hand go twice very quickly and he hurt uh, Barry Michael because Michael came back and he was feeling for him with the left hand. A much better round for uh, Frank Ropus. And Barry Michael certainly wouldn't at this stage of the fight want to stand up there and swap punches. Seconds out, round three. The third round and Ropus very keen to get on with the business and Johnny Famish had almost popped one then. And Johnny having quite a word to say to Ropus. Yes, I think the referee, Johnny Famishon, in this one really needs to keep control of it because it become a very tough, brawling affair with the tactics of Ropus and the style of Michael who tries to crowd him, crowd Ropus up whenever Ropus looks like unleashing a two-handed attack, as he is now. Only this time Michael's back on the ropes, and that's no place for Michael to be. Now he's wrestling with him. Good left hand double by Ropus, but Michael matches him with a left hand uh, counter. With eyebrows that are reportedly pretty fragile, Barry Michael is fighting a very dangerous fight, staying in so close to Ropus and those in close exchanges. A clash of heads could cause all sorts of problems for him. Right hand by Ropers, a good punch. Neat left hand punching by Michael. Michael fighting from good balance. Ropers with a very, very flat-footed walk-up, let him go style of fighting. The boxer Michael jabbing with the left hand. Of course, that's always the classic match in boxing, isn't it? The boxer, the puncher. And there's the puncher, right up close to Michael. Left hand jab. Good right hand counter by Ropers. Shook Michael. Another right hand by Ropers. Good punch. And Michael in a bit of trouble here. Holding on. And not holding on too neatly. Left into the body by Ropers. Very strong. Right to the head. Good right hand by Ropers now. Michael has to stand now and punch with him. I think it's going to take a little more than those snappy left hands to keep Ropus at bay. Well, they were good scoring punches right on the nose. But Ropus just walked through them. There's a lusty exchange over near the blue corner. Michael crowding up on Ropus again. And Ropus comes out of it with a good left hook to the head. Left into the body. That body punch was a good one. A good hard left hook into the body by Ropus. Michael having a pretty torrid uh, third round. And the bell for the end of a good fighting round. By Michael has no choice at this stage of the fight but to stay in there and keep fighting with Ropus. Ropus is too strong at the moment and he's letting too many big punches go. He's a tough, rough son of a gun. And he's just waiting for that bell to get out there Second for the fourth up. round round to go four. after Michael once again. 
who with all of his boxing skill in that third round was unable to keep Ropus at bay and Ropus was right on target with a lot of big punches. Now Michael realising that he's got to force the pace and take the fight up to Ropus does that at the start of the fourth with left grips to the body and then left hands to the head. A very good opening exchange by Barry Michael. Michael's got to use his speed and his ability to move around the ring. If he stands and swap punches with Michael, that's what's going to happen to him. That's a good left hook by Michael, but no place to be with his back to the ropes. Now he's got around to the open spaces where he's going to be in much better balance and much better control. Barry Michael must move a lot more in this early part of the fight. Robus is too strong and too dangerous at the moment for him to take chances with him. Robus is fighting a fighter's fight. Up on his opponent, crowding him, clubbing away with both hands. Jolting up a cut in close by Ropus. <laughs> Michael picking his mark a lot better in this round. That left hand working well for him. Hard jolting left that time by uh, Ropers. A minute to go in this round. Michael back on the ropes and that's troublesome for him. Tries to pull Ropers off balance and even though Ropers was being pulled off balance, he still, still kept punching. Ropers couldn't cut... Michael off in the corner that time. Rope was bleeding freely from the nose. Michael lays in on top of him. Now it's Ropus, right hand to the head. Neat left hook by Michael after Ropus had scored with a neat left to the body. Good left of the body that time by Michael, punching much more cleanly in this round. As the bell goes for the end of round four. Barry Michael using that left hand very, very well. He, uh, particularly early in the round, he, he moved around the ring, he used his pace, he used his better balance, and scored a lot of with a lot of punches. Roper still continued his walk-up style of fighting, tough, brawling fighting, and his effort to hammer his opponent with both five. hands. Referee telling them not to move until the bell goes, but they barely took note. They're in it again. After a great round in the third round for Frank Ropus, it was Michael who came back in the fourth, fighting his more natural style, in moving around, jabbing, and when the opportunity came, punching. Now here's Ropus catching up with him with a right to the body. then by Michael right on the button hard jolting right hand in close by Ropers booming right hand by Ropers he gets his head underneath Michael's chin and Michael pretty cool still working his left hand well good two-handed attack to the head by Ropers anticipating Ropus' attack now and moving well. Well, he moved the wrong way that time and got a left hook for his, for his trouble. Michael 
goes back into the corner, which is not the best place to be against a brawling puncher like Ropers. And this is the fifth of 12 rounds. Uppercut by Michael. Beautiful left hand work and then a jolting right hand. But Ropus is at, at equal to the challenge and back he comes with a right to the head. Good variety of time by Michael. He placed his punches very well indeed. Ropus, tough and courageous, keeps coming after his opponent again. Runs into a hail of leather again from. Uh, Michael. <laughs> and it was Ropers who finished the round in a Flurry of leather as the bell goes for the end of round five. A flurry of leather as the bell goes for the end of round five. Up to round six and there was blood on uh, Barry Michael's face as he went to the corner after that uh, two-fisted attack by Frank Rapers in the last seconds of the round. But it was not from a, for a cut on the eyes. It got a cut under the chin, uh, which bled uh, quite a bit. But it's okay uh, now and there's no problem. But... Uh, an anxious moment for the corner when there was quite a little blood in his face as he went to the corner at the end of the round. Up comes Ropers, trying to continue from where he left off in that round. He finished on very strongly after taking quite a hammering in the early part of the round from Michael. Michael has got to realise that if he gives Ropers one opportunity to get in there and let those punches go, he's going to have a lot of trouble. Michael's also bleeding from a cut in the lip. Swelling up a little too, his bottom lip with a right to the head by Ropers as he moves on him again. There's jabbing left hands from uh, Michael, but it's not enough to keep Ropers at bay. Ropers gets in on top of him again. Ropers finishing very strongly in the last 30 seconds of the fifth round has really picked up this round from where he left off and he's giving Michael plenty to go on with. Michael with a cut under his chin, a cut on the lip. It looks as though his left eye is starting to uh, show signs of wear also. Trickle of blood there in his left eye. He's left the left, left eyebrow. Roper sensing he's got his opponent in real trouble, steps up close to him again. Boy, this is a fight. After him again, keeping the pressure on Michael. Michael left hook, but a hard, booming left hook counter from Ropers and an uppercut from, Ropers, uh, from uh, Ropers before Michael pushes him back on the ropes. Ropers, toe to toe, punch for punch. Michael answers the challenge. Ropers getting his head under Michael's chin again. And the, the sixth round with the points, I thought, going to Ropers. And it's uh, repairs being done on uh, Michael's uh, eyebrow. And that's the sort of uh, work from Ropers that uh, made those repairs necessary. Michael answered the challenge very well, punch for punch. But it's Barry out. Michael who had a very, very torrid round sixth seven. round. And this is the seventh round coming up. Into the second half of the fight. Past the halfway mark now. 
and this is a fight. Barry Michael and Frank Ropus. Ropus after Michael. Right hand, flush on the eyebrow. Up he comes to Michael again. Michael trying to hold him at bay. That's not going to help at all. He's only, only one way that he's going to stop Ropus coming in on him is to really place that left hand hard and accurately. work by Michael but Frank Ropus is not worried about neatness he's not worried about style he's only worried about hammering his opponent out of the fight and there he goes clash of heads a bad one too back with a right to the head the brawl is on at the moment as they wrestle away at close quarters punch for punch as they fight for the title oh boy what a fight this is right to the head by Michael Ropus just will not be denied as he bores in again. Ropus the tank, Frank the tank, here he comes. Wrestling away with Barry Michael, trying to get his arms clear to punch, and he does. And Jumbin Famishon falls enough, breaks them away from the close quarters. 50 seconds of the round to go. Referee having a look at Michael's left eye, and signals fight on. Left and right by Michael, left hook by Michael. Ropus with a right to the head. What a fight, what a go this one is. Ropus still going in on Michael. Michael weakening a little there. Back on the rope. Tries to fight Ropus at bay. Ropus comes in, has a look at his opponent. But Michael was able to claim just for the moment, but Ropus not to be denied. Here he comes again, a right to the head, just as the bell goes for the end of round seven. Round eight it is in the Australian uh, light well away championship with Frank Ropers getting on top in that sixth and seventh round certainly showing no signs that he's weakening from having to make the weight fighting strongly rolling on as Frank the tank to Barry Michael and Michael knowing that he's really now got to try and turn this fight in his own favor after having points early he's fallen behind I think as Ropers puts him right back into the corner and still keeps hammering away at him right to the head by Ropers Flash of heads there, and the referee speaks to Ropers. Box on. Barry Michael bleeding from cut under the chin, cut lip and a cut on the left eyebrow. Ample evidence of the hammering that Frank Ropus has given him and their brawling exchanges. It's tough and as hard a fight as you'd want to see anywhere. Punch for punch they go again in round eight. Clash of heads then. 
Ropus keeps punching. Hook by Ropus was a good punch. A counter hook now by uh, Michael. time by Michael and Callis with the left hook but he can't evade the next ones. Ropus goes both hands to the body. <laughs> and the bell for the... A tough, hard, close fight between Frank Ropus and Barry Michael for the Australian light welterweight title. With Michael getting a lot of points early. Rope was closing on him in the middle part of the fight and then Michael coming back on that last round and boxing well to take the points. It's tough and it's even. Seconds out, round nine. And this is round nine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve to go. They're not quite as eager to bounce out of the corner for the ninth round because each of them will be feeling the wear and tear. Good left hook now by Michael. Left out of the body now by Gropus. Up he goes to Michael again. Michael takes a right to the head and gets out of the corner quickly. One thing about Frank Gropus, he hates taking a backward step. Catches up with him with a right hand. Rains leather at him. Michael clinching with him. And Johnny Famish and the referee working as hard as the two of them. Well, they're not getting hurt. Taking the points on that exchange, work tidy up. Frank Ropus getting a little, ra a little ragged. Not that he's been the personification of style at any stage in the fight. Hit Michael with the right to the body. Michael smothered up that time on the ropes. Wants to hold on now. Now he hits for the right to the body. Ropus missing with his uh, right was to the head. Goes to the body again. And Michael jabs him neatly with left hands. Minute of the round to go. Good left hook that time by Michael. Jabs the left hand. Rope is in on top of him again. But missing with a lot of leather there. Good right hand drive to the body that time by Michael. Neat left hook to the head by Michael. Scoring points in those exchanges well. There's Michael on the target now. This good left hand. As the bell goes, to the end of round nine, good round for Barry Michael. The close-up uh, exchange between Barry Michael and uh, Frank Ropus. Frank Ropus not nearly as accurate with his punching in that round, and it was a good round for Barry Michael. Seconds out, round ten.
Round 10 it is. 10, 11, 12 to go. Was a lot more accurate in this 10th round placing his punches a lot better than he did in the ninth. works to the body left and right to the body Rope was throwing everything into this desperate 10th round he obviously thought that the fight was slipping away from him again in the ninth, and he's throwing everything in this desperate 10th to try and Hammer his opponent out of the fight. Frank the Tank goes up to Barry Boy Michael. Michael jabbing that left hand. Balance is gone at the moment. He's back in the corner. Fighting with everything he knows to keep this brawling opponent at, at bay. Good left hook by Michael. left hook Frank Ropers drops his hands Michael moves away from him, but Ropus comes after him quickly. Michael wasn't going to fall for that. Less than a minute of this round to go. Good left and right by Michael. Ropus stays in, but Michael's the more accurate puncher in close. Ropus clubs away at him though and gets, gets through with both hands. stumbles, I think it might be a little bit of a trick, no it's not, he's gone back on the ropes and he's in trouble, he's in trouble, left hook now by Michael, another left hook by Michael, Ropers covering up on the ropes, he's hammering away, there's only a few seconds of the round to go, Michael has Ropers back in the corner, hits him with right and left of the head, Barry Boy Michael, lightweight champion fighting for his life in this one as he tries to put Ropers out of it and the bell for the end of a sensational Tenth round. What a sense. From somewhere in the steamy tropics of the Pacific, the adventure. Two fisted attack by uh, Second, Barry round. Michael round that almost the ended the fight. The bell saving Ropus at that stage. Coming up now for round 11. 11 and 12 to go. Frank Ropus looks pretty shaky as he comes out. The referee ordering one of the seconds out or back off the apron of the ring. And the towel's in the ring. It's all over. And Barry Michael is the winner. Barry Michael is the winner by a knockout in the 11th round. Here in the red corner. Check his gloves, off. gloves coming off. And Barry Michael, who's had a very tough, rough night in it. When you're ready, Barry. When you're ready. When you're ready, pal. Have you, you okay? The battle silence are critics, Ron. Hey? Oh, I'll tell you what, he's some strong boy. My God. I think your supporters might have had a few worries in the middle stages oh, of the fight. Hey. What about you? <laughs> Me too. He's so bloody strong. I thought he was. I was hurting him underneath all the time. I could feel him grunting. I thought, my God, when is this Iron Man going to slow down? But uh, it just came suddenly. I, I felt him shake from a few left hooks through the fight, and I was waiting for it all the time. What and about, finally, I got through. What about your corner men? Did they think that you're in that you had you're in trouble were, with the point score? They were confident that I was doing well. 
kept me in a kid, kid box and said that Frank was tiring. But hell, Ron, it's a hard way to make a dollar, I tell you. You gave us a great, a great fight. Congratulations, well done. Frank Ropus. Where's Frank? Is he gone? Frank's bitterly disappointed and very shaken and on the way back to the ring. The winner of our contest tonight, the Australasian Light Waterway Championship, Barry Boy Michaels. Brosnan is presenting the championship trophy to the winner of tonight's Australasian Light Welterweight Championship, Barry Michael, winning uh, over Frank Roper, stopping Ropers in round 11. Since Federation, so that's something, Barry. So on behalf of all here present, I'd like to thank the team contestants. Well, this is the way that Barry Michael got on top of Frank Ropers. And the bell in round 10, saving Ropers, but round 11 was to see the end of it very quickly as Ropers' corner men threw in the towel. It was a great fight, a really tough fight, close all the way with Michael leading early, Ropers getting on top, I thought, in the middle stages, and then Barry Michael coming back and with that two-fisted attack wiping out any arguments whatsoever. And Barry Michael, the winner by a knock by a knockout in the eleventh round. And the applause is for Barry Michael as we say good night to you all from I'd like to say thank you to Frank. He said a lot of nasty things about me before the fight. I hope uh, we can have a beer together in the future, but uh, if not, well that's the game. Um, he gave me a very, very hard fight. The man is he's a bloody iron man. I, I hit him with that many hard body shots. I thought he was never going to slow up. I shook him with a few left hooks and suddenly it came. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. I know, I know the majority of the, the people were behind Frank. I just hope now that they'll support me some more. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd, like to thank, I'd like to thank Hank Stanley for putting the show on because I was uh, going to head back to the States and he made me an offer I couldn't resist. Um, it settled a long, a long, long dispute. Uh, if Frank wants a rematch, I'm not going to give it to him. <laughs> okay, with those comments from the winner tonight, we say good night to you from TV Ringside. This live and exclusive telecast of the Australasian Mike.